So let me get this straight. You want to know what the worst character slash cart combination is in every mainline Mario Kart. No, no, you don't have to explain yourself. Mario Kart savants like you and I recognize talent for talent. And look, I get it. Even winning can get boring if you're doing it race after race after race. <coughs> At that point, it makes sense that you'd want to handicap yourself. And really, there's no better way than to use the worst character or cart these games have to offer. Now, you might have a general idea of what these combinations could be, but let's be honest, you'd have to be quite the unhinged masochist to go around testing these combos out on yourself, only to then make it into a video for other people to watch. Ah, this shit fucking sucks. All joking aside though, that's exactly what we'll be figuring out today. We'll be going through each game and analysing why exactly these specific characters and card combinations are the worst of the worst. With all that said and done, let's begin with the game that kickstarted this iconic franchise. Seeing as Super Mario Kart was the first game to release in the franchise, its selection of characters is fairly small in comparison. Even so, there are quite a few significant differences between them all. Super Mario Kart splits its characters off into specific pairs with each one excelling in a certain stat. Yoshi and Peach, for example, were the king and queen of acceleration, while Donkey Kong Jr. and Bowser were speed demons. There is one duo, however, that fails to excel in any metric and are therefore overshadowed by every other character in the game. Now given the franchise is called Mario Kart, it's kind of ironic that the Mario Brothers are in my opinion, the worst characters in the game. But why is that? Like I said, every other duo excels in at least one metric, be that acceleration, handling, or speed. Mario and Luigi, on the other hand, are just average at best in most of these metrics. Even their best stat, which is speed, pales in comparison to Bowser and Donkey Kong Jr. We can take this a step further as well, where you'll see that they have, on average, the worst top speed when off-road. And trust me, if you've played this game at all, you know just how much time you spend off-road. <laughs> oh my god. Now while we're on the topic, I've seen other people list Bowser and Donkey Kong Jr. as the worst duo because of their poor handling and acceleration, but honestly, it's a bit of a skill issue. Now I'm not saying I can use these two well, because... But when all the world records set in time trials use these two characters, it's pretty hard to argue against them. Tangents aside though, Mario and Luigi's acceleration isn't anything to write home about either, as they're simply outclassed by the majority of the cast. If you're somehow still not convinced, here is the performance chart from the official instruction manual. This chart categorizes each of the pairs and ranks them based on how well they perform on each of the game's main tracks. And as you can see, Mario and Luigi are the only ones who have a not-so-hot ranking twice. If we add the total star count of the four tracks listed here for each pair, we can see definitively that the results aren't even close. Mario and Luigi are without a doubt the worst characters in Super Mario Kart. From here we transcend into the next dimension, with Mario Kart 64. Now while Nintendo may have added an extra D to their kart racer, this wouldn't lead to any extra characters being introduced, as Mario Kart 64 would in fact still feature 8 playable races. That being said, it did switch out Koopa for Wario and Donkey Kong Jr for, well, Donkey Kong. Mario Kart 64 would also be the first game in the franchise to separate its characters based on weight classes, and it's these specific classes that differentiate each character's stats. I think it's fairly apparent that lightweights dominate Mario Kart 64 due to their high acceleration and top speed, meaning the worst character falls within the medium and heavyweight classes. Rating one of these as the worst isn't exactly a simple task though, as their stat differences are fairly minute. For one, they both cap out at the same top speed. But interestingly though, while heavyweights have the lower acceleration stat to begin with, they actually outpace middleweights by reaching their top speed at a faster rate. They also lose the least speed when cornering and are the heaviest, meaning they aren't able to be smacked around as much. That being said, I do think middleweights just barely outclass them due to their higher off-road speed and superior handling, which makes taking turns far simpler. This then leaves us with Donkey Kong, Wario, and Bowser. Now we've heard people say that Bowser was the worst because of his massive frame which obscures your vision to a certain extent, but funnily enough, I think Bowser is one of the best characters in the game due to his ability to pull off a certain technique. In Mario Kart 64, should you spin out, get hit by an item, or lose speed in another way, there is a hidden technique you can employ which involves tapping the A button three times before holding it down. This results in a faster acceleration than if you were to just hold the A button from the get-go, and Bowser along with the lightweights benefit the most from this technique. He's also the heaviest character in the game, and can therefore cause other players to spin out should he ram into them. With that in mind, I believe Wario is the worst character in Mario Kart 64. 
He doesn't benefit from the triple tap A technique, and he's also the lightest out of the heavyweights, meaning that even if he was to collide with Donkey Kong, he'd be the one in the hospital. By this point, Mario Kart had entered the world of handhelds, and while its character selection screen hadn't changed since Mario Kart 64, their stats were a different story. Not that you could really tell based on the character select screen, as it only shows you two stats, and they're essentially catfish. See, for international releases, this top stat was translated as speed, but it doesn't actually refer to the character's speed stat, instead marking their acceleration. Speed, which is the most important stat in the game, is hidden alongside a plethora of other stats like handling, drift, and off-road. Super Circuit actually corrected a lot of the odd balancing choices from Mario Kart 64, meaning heavyweights now had the highest top speed with the lowest acceleration. They had inferior off-road speed, terrible handling, and garbage braking, yet they remained the best characters in the game. But how can that be? Well, heavyweights not only had the highest top speed in the game, but they also skidded the least, and their low drift stat actually benefits players, making it far simpler to take turns due to the slippery physics of Super Circuit. The middleweights remain the super mid bros, but in this case their speed stat and decent acceleration keep them from being the worst. That leaves us with the lightweights, who in contrast to Mario Kart 64 are the worst characters in Super Circuit. They may offer the highest acceleration, but they are the slowest characters in the game while also having the highest chance of skidding. We can take this one step further though, because there is one particular lightweight who's worse than the other two, and that unfortunate soul is Yoshi, who not only lacks in acceleration, but also takes the spot as the slowest character in the entire game. As an added bonus fact, Super Circuit's grading system employs the use of skill points, and guess who gives you the least amount of skill points when driving as them? Yeah, someone at Nintendo definitely got decimated a few too many times by Yoshi in Mario Kart 64. Yoshi may have the others beat in terms of braking, handling, and off-road, but speed is king in Mario Kart, which ultimately makes him the weakest of the bunch in this iteration. We zoom on over to another console release in the form of Double Dash, and this is when things get a bit more complex. Double Dash, as the name implies, introduced a mechanic that let players pick two different characters. The game was also the first one to introduce multiple cards to pick from, with each one having its own set of strengths and weaknesses. Now, Double Dash is fairly interesting, as the characters themselves don't possess any stats outside of their specific weight classes. These weight classes are what constitute which cart options you're given. The cart selected would be based on the heaviest character, meaning if you picked a light character with a heavy character, the carts offered would be the heavy ones. With that being said, the carts are by far the most important feature to work out when we're trying to identify the worst possible combination. Double Dash, like previous games, displays some of the cart stats on the character selection screen, but many of them are hidden in the game's coding, and annoyingly, they are some of the most important ones to look at. The mini turbo stat in particular is one of the most important, meaning Carts like the DK Jumbo, Wario Car, and Cooper King suffer from terrible bursts of speed. You may have noticed that these are all heavy carts, yet even in that categorization, they have their fair share of differences. The best way to identify the worst of these three though is to look at how Double Dash handles drifting and turning in general. If you've played Double Dash, you may have noticed that certain cart's back wheels will swerve in the opposite direction that you're steering, while others will swerve its front wheels in the same direction as you're steering. This results in two types of carts, those being front end inward carts and back end outward ones. There's also a median version whose turning angle isn't quite as sharp as the front end inwards one, but also isn't as tame as the back ends. Because of its tamer drift angles, many skilled players consider back end and outwards carts to be the creme of the crop, as it allows for things like this. Back end carts, on the other hand, are considered the worst because of their sharp drift angles, meaning the Cooper King is most likely the worst cart in the entire game. It also just has an incredibly large frame, making it almost impossible to dodge any sort of obstacle or item thrown your way. Now I know I said the characters don't matter as much, but they do still play a slight role, as each one comes with its own unique, special item. Some of these items are far stronger than others, so if we truly want the worst combination in the game, we're going to have to look at the two worst special items. Now don't forget one of them has to be a heavy character, so that way we can pick the Cooper King. And for that slot it looks like it's going to be Wario, with his Babom special item. This item is fairly common, but takes a certain amount of skill and precision to use, meaning it's not necessarily a very consistent item. The other character will have to have access to the worst special item in the game, the Heart, which is not only extremely rare in the first place, but also just isn't too useful in either its defensive or offensive capabilities. That means the worst combination in the entire game would be either Peach or Daisy paired with Wario in the Cooper King. I mean, it certainly looks like an abomination. Brother, uh. But back on the handhelds and onto my personal favourite, Mario Kart. Now working out the worst character slash kart combination is far simpler than it was for Double Dash, 
and that all comes down to one particular technique that was popularized in this game. Now we already saw shades of this technique used in Double Dash, but it was Mario Kart DS that truly brought snaking to the forefront, essentially cementing it as an iconic technique in Mario Kart history. This technique was so dominant, so essential, that all we really need to figure out is which kart sucks the most at snaking. Snaking was most effective with lighter carts that had high acceleration, good handling, low drift and powerful mini turbos. This is why vehicles like the Dry Bomber, Egg One and Poltergust 4000 were so popular as they excelled in all three of these stats. Heavier vehicles on the other hand really struggled in DS. Carts like the Tyrant and Rambi Rambo were terrible due to their garbage mini turbos and awful handling. But even these two are better than Peach's Royale. This thing just sucks on all fronts. Yeah, the Tyrant and Rambi Ramba are bad, but at least they have high top speeds to account for their shitty handling and drifting. The Royal doesn't even have that. <laughs> It also has one of the highest drift stats, making snaking on this abomination a complete nightmare. The characters themselves only differ based on their weights, and seeing as you compare any character with any cart once you complete all cups on the mirror mode, they play an incredibly small part in this case. That being said, there is technically a worst combination, as heavier characters apply a penalty to the vehicle's off-road stat, meaning they drive slower while off-road. As Bowser is the heaviest character in the game, pairing him with Peach's Royal Kart gives us the worst combination in Mario Kart DS. We move from my favourite Mario Kart to everyone else's favourite in Mario Kart Wii. Wait what? Your favourite is Super Circuit, but that's that's impossible. Anyway, let's talk about the game that first introduced bikes to the series. Ironically enough, Mario Kart Wii probably spawned the most infamous character kart combination in Mario Kart history, and to this day, the Funky Kong Flame Runner legacy carries on. I guess we'll just have to wait and see if the Yoshi Teddy Buggy combo can top it in the future. But enough about the best kart combinations, we're interested in the worst ones. The most important stats in Mario Kart Wii are speed, mini turbo, and weight. The first two should be fairly obvious, but weight has certainly garnered far more importance in this game, and that's mainly due to there being an additional 4 races on the track. This makes for far more hectic situations, and if you're stuck in the middle of the pack as a lighter combo, you're getting absolutely fucked on. Now if it wasn't obvious enough, vehicles like the Mark Bike and Flame Runner are fairly strong in all three of these metrics. This paired with their ability to take tighter turns made them dominate the playing field to the point where it was all you would see in online races. That being said, if we want to find the worst kart, we just have to look at the inverse. What if we could find a kart or bike with garbage speed, terrible weight, and awful mini turbos. Now thankfully Nintendo knew better than to shit out a worthless vehicle like that, but there are a few that got pretty close. Those being the Booster Seat, Bit Bike, and Jet Setter. The Jet Setter is probably the best of these three because despite it handling like complete ass, it does have a very high speed cap and decent weight to counteract its poor mini turbos and handling. The other two vehicles on the other hand struggle for similar reasons. They're both extremely slow, embarrassingly light, and while they do have a decent mini turbo, it's not nearly enough to make up for their abysmal speed. Out of these two though, the Bit Bike is definitely worse worse as it holds the title of not only the slowest vehicle in the entire game, but also the lightest. All that's left is to pair it with the wrong character. Each character in Mario Kart Wii comes with a few hidden stats of its own, and as we can see, some of them are far more important than others. In terms of the small characters, the worst of them all is most likely Baby Mario. The extra handling is completely useless, and sure the added weight is nice, but even if you were to add the plus 8 weight stat to the bit bike, it still comes out as one of the lightest vehicles in the entire game. Up next is the most underappreciated Mario Kart game ever. Like, guys, come on. It added gliders, fuck, and underwater sections, oh, piss off, and a uh, first person? But without a doubt, the most influential addition to this game was the ability to fully customize our carts with a whole bunch of separate parts. Now that's cool and all, but it definitely made finding the worst cart combination even more annoying. Pair that with a selection of characters and carts that are for the most part fairly balanced across the board, it means the best way for us to identify the worst cart and character is to find the combinations with the least amount of advantages. Now something that isn't too well known about Mario Kart 7 is the fact that its acceleration stat was somewhat glitched. Unlike the previous iterations of the series, Mario Kart 7 separated the acceleration stat into tiers, where it would round numbers down to the closest whole number. For example, a cart combination that gave an acceleration stat of 2.25 would be classed in the second acceleration tier. If your cart had an acceleration stat of 3.5, you'd be in the third acceleration tier. Now this is far more significant than you might think at first. Say we were to look at these two carts and their acceleration stats. At face value, you might say, oh, one's slightly better than the other. But that 0.25 difference actually equates 
points to a whole tier of difference and is fairly substantial in game. Because of this, combinations that end with a 0.5 acceleration stat are deemed weaker, and it was one of the main factors I made sure to hit when I stumbled across this monstrosity of a combo. This combination includes a cruiserweight driver in the Cact X body, slim wheels, and the super collider. Cruiserweight drivers in general are just worse heavyweights. Not only are they slower and lighter than heavyweights, but their handling and mini turbo stats are identical. Sure, they have a little more acceleration, but it's very insignificant. The Cact X body and slim wheels suffer for a lot of the same reasons. They're slow, have no mini turbo stats, and their acceleration numbers aren't amazing either. This paired finally with the super glider with its zero acceleration and mini turbo stats gives us a final combination that has very low top speed, one of the worst acceleration tiers, and pretty pathetic mini turbos. It's not an unusual combo by any means, like I said Mario Kart 7 is fairly balanced for the most part, but this one is definitely the weakest I've tested out for sure. We're now onto the most recent Mario Kart games, and I will actually be separating the base Mario Kart 8 from Deluxe, and that's mainly because the worst combination in each game is not actually the same. See the base version of Mario Kart 8 had a unique technique that was discovered not long after its release, that was ultimately patched when Deluxe released a few years later. This technique was called bunny hopping, or fire hopping, and essentially it extended your boost allowing you to go faster. This works for any type of boost as well, like mini turbos, mushrooms, and even stars. This led to a significant increase in speed if you were able to pull them off consistently throughout each lap. That's why you will see players hopping from side to side in pretty much every Mario Kart 8 world record. Now you're probably wondering why I brought up this technique in the first place. Maybe you're thinking it's like snaking in DS, where some vehicles are better than others. And well, that's part of it. There are definitely some vehicles that are technically weaker at fire hopping than others, but even worse, there's a whole subset of vehicles that aren't even capable of fire hopping in the first place, those being the inside drifting bikes. They've truly had a fall from grace since their Mario Kart Wii days, and it's kind of unfortunate really. On their own, they're fairly decent with a solid acceleration and mini turbo stat. Alas, fire hopping is just too strong though, and these sports bikes just get slaughtered on the straights by others just hopping past them. Lace these bikes up with the super collide and some monster wheels, which are just complete trash in base Mario Kart 8, with awful speed, no acceleration, and no mini turbos, and you've got one of the worst combos in the entire game. As an added bonus, I do want to tack on this combo which is essentially the same thing but with the bad wagon body instead. This one is especially bad in Grand Prix mode because of its non-existent mini turbo stat and acceleration stats and with the amount of obstacles and items used in that mode, this combo actually gives these sports bikes a run for their money. And with that, you've arrived at the most recent mainline Mario Kart. I'm not covering Tor because it's just a confusing mess that keeps updating as the days go on, so it's practically impossible to even assign someone as the worst given just how much shit goes on in that game. With that being said, let's get back to Deluxe. Now Deluxe is probably the game that most people are familiar with given that it's not only the best selling game but also the most recent iteration of Mario Kart. It shouldn't surprise anyone when I say the best stats in Deluxe are the mini turbo stat as well as the speed stat. Because of this, Baby Peach and Baby Daisy are the two worst characters in the entire game. They're barely outclassed by Lemmy and Baby Rosalina, simply because they lose a point in acceleration, which is far more important than handling and traction. They may have the highest mini turbo stat, but without any speed to go along with it, this falls flat pretty fast. This kind of thinking continues to the body, with the Steel Diver, Bone Rattler, and Tri Speeder coming out at the bottom due to their low speed stat and awful mini turbos. The Metal or Gold Tars are the worst pairing for similar reasons, and we top all of this off with the Super Glider one last time due to its lackluster mini turbo stat and long wingspan which can obscure parts of the screen while you're gliding. The final combo ends up looking like this, and it's just awful, both in terms of its stats and its appearance. Your mini turbos suck, there's very little handling or acceleration going on, and the speed isn't amazing either. And there you have it, those are the worst characters and cards from every mainline Mario Kart. Now are these completely unusable combinations? No, of course not. You can find success with any card or any character, and just because some are worse than others doesn't mean you can't use them. This was more of a fun little experiment that I wanted to test, and hey, if you did want a handicap, feel free to test these combos out yourself. I'm sure you'll have lots and lots of fun with them. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Wait, what? What, huh? Wait, uh, dude, ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Hey. If you guys enjoyed this video, please do consider dropping a like and subscribing. That's all from me this time, and I hope to see you all in the next video.